Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent. In this video clip I would like to discuss with you how the or general de Calvin cycle and the light reaction of the photosynthesis interact with each other and how they are regulated. So why is this of importance? Well, we know that in the light reactions we generate compounds like ATP and NADPH that are absolutely essential for the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle, of course, is important for the fixation of carbon dioxide. And in other words, if we don't have these compounds, ATP and NADPH, we can't run the Calvin cycle. Or again, a, phrased in a slightly different way, if the light reaction does not produce what we require in the Calvin cycle, then it is fairly pointless to run the Calvin cycle. So we have to make sure that light reaction and Calvin cycle are actually nicely in sync, because otherwise we don't need to activate the enzymes for the Calvin cycle. So how is this uh, accomplished? First of all, let's remind ourselves how the light reaction actually works. So we have excitation by light of the photosystem 2 and we get an electron flow through soluble compounds to cytochrome B6F and then to photosystem 1. And in this photosystem 1 we produce ferredoxine the electrons of the reduced ferredoxine are then transferred onto NADPH. At the same time, we uh, produce a very strong proton gradient across the membrane. So I symbolize that uh, like that here. So we have proton influx from the stroma to the thylakoid lumen and we get a very high proton concentration in here. So like that. And this proton gradient, which usually gives us a pH of 5 in the lumen of the thylakoid, and a pH of 8 in the stroma, this proton gradient is then harnessed to drive the ATP synthase and generate ATP here. So very clearly when our light reaction is running well, we get um, a strong pH gradient, we have pH 8 here, and that indicates that the light reaction is working. So that's uh, quite nice. Now, where does the Calvin cycle take place? Of course, the Calvin cycle enzymes are located in the stroma. So, Calvin cycle in stroma. And many of the enzymes from the Calvin cycle are regulated by, uh, through the pH. So at pH 8, this indicates that the light reaction is working, the enzymes are active, At pH 7, that means when no light reaction is uh, running, the enzymes are inactive. So we basically, the enzymes of the Calvin cycle basically use the information that um, there is a proton gradient, that the photosystem uh, or the photosynthesis is working properly and they use this information to get activated. So pH 8 enzymes of the Calvin cycle are active, P 
pH 7 and below the enzymes are not active because pH 7 or lower means that there is no light reaction, that the photosynthesis light reaction does not work properly. So enzymes can be regulated by the pH and there is also uh, another way how these enzymes can be regulated. We know that in the photosystem 1 the electrons are transferred onto ferredoxine and they reduce ferredoxine and this these electrons are then transferred onto NADPH and again this here uh, this ferredoxine is uh, some kind of sensor that allows the enzyme of the Calvin cycle in the um, stroma to detect whether the light reaction of the photosynthesis is working properly. How does that work? Well, we've got a light impulse. This activates photosystem 1 and the electrons are transferred onto uh, ferredoxin. So the electrons uh, are transferred onto oxidized ferredoxin and reduce ferredoxin. So uh, reduction basically means gaining of electrons. So we've got this uh, reduced ferredoxin and usually these uh, electrons could be transferred onto NADPH. Let me indicate that like that. Oops, I need to get some color. So these electrons would be transferred onto NADPH or produce NADPH. But there's also another way. These electrons can also be transferred onto a small protein called thyroidoxin. This thyroidoxin can shuttle between the oxidized form, so that is here the oxidized form, and the reduced form. So these electrons from reduced ferredoxin are transferred onto oxidized ferredoxin and um, they form this reduced form of thyroidoxin. Of course, if we take away the electrons from the ferredoxin, we get oxidized ferredoxin, which then can uh, again participate in this cycle here. Now, what does this reduced ferredoxin, which is present in the stroma, of the chloroplast. What can this reduced form do? Well, it can transfer these electrons that it has onto a disulfide bond of enzymes of the Calvin cycle. So we've got here an enzyme where we have a disulfide bond and the electrons of the reduced thyroidoxin are transferred onto that and we open this disulfide bond and we get the enzyme in the reduced state here. And for uh, a number of the enzymes of the Calvin cycle, we know that when the enzymes are in this oxidized states, in this oxidized disulfide bond, then the enzyme is inactive. And only if the electrons from reduced thyroidoxin are transferred, then this enzyme becomes active. So uh, if we take the overall summary of this process, what we see is that only if we have active PS1, active photosystem 1, we produce reduced ferredoxin. This reduced ferredoxin produces reduced thyroidoxin, and the reduced thyroidoxin produces reduced Calvin cycle enzyme, and only the reduced form is active. Usually, the active form is converted into the inactive form through uh, oxygen or uh, other oxidants. And uh, at night, when we don't have a photosynthesis running, uh, we convert the ferredoxin into the oxidized form. The thyroidoxin is then converted into the oxidized form. The enzyme is converted into the oxidized form and it, it remains inactive. And it's basically waiting for photosystem 1 
producing the uh, reduced form of the ferredoxine and the whole cycle starts again. So in a way, some of the enzymes of the Calvin cycle are actually activated by light, but not directly, uh, but rather by this ferredoxine thyroidoxin um, electron shuttle. And the important thing is here that the um, enzymes of the Calvin cycle are predominantly in the active form when they are in the reduced state and they are in the inactive state uh, when they have this disulfid bond. So what we've seen is basically that um, Calvin cycle enzymes can be regulated by pH. High pH means the enzymes are active. That means that the uh, that we've got a proton gradient and the photosynthesis, the light reaction works. So that is the regulation by pH and the regulation by light uh, is through the presence of this reduced ferredoxine. I hope uh, you found this useful and uh, thank you very much for watching it.